Hi, everybody. Uh, today is our second translator call, and we have a lot on our agenda. And let's start right away with the first item on the agenda, uh, which is uh, uh, an update on translating the website. So, Yuyu, would you like to give us an update? Yes, let me just get started. Uh, I'll share the screen. I I can figure out how to share the screen. Is there a green button, maybe? Yeah, the okay. green button. The the yeah. Yeah. To the lower part of your uh, screen in, in Zoom, yeah, it should be a green button. Uh, or just wait. press Alt plus plus S. Hi. Okay. Uh, sure. Okay. Okay. Can you see it? Yep. Okay, cool. So, let me just push. So, so, I'll start. So, basically, I followed the the method that was suggested and it just involves duplicating the files and just referencing them with tags on the files once that's done we just i just need to change some stuff on the layouts so it can recognize the new languages but other than that what to do? Um, it would be better if, if you have questions that I can answer. Yeah. So, so other than I, I have a question. So uh, you're going to because I don't fully understand the like technical aspect. So you're going to uh, you have decided to copy uh, put all the files uh, for the specific website pages that we discussed. Uh, into one file and then transfer it to TransFX, is that correct? Kinda. There are two types of files mainly. There are these files like uh, the vision page that ends in .md and these files I can, uh, these files can be uploaded wall. So I'll upload the the whole file. I don't have to change anything. So I upload this file like like it is, like this, and then on TransFX it gets adapted, and you just have to translate it on TransFX. Let me see. Uh, okay, vision. Okay, 
this is the the text on Transifex. So you, you can see page, then vision, etc. Some of these you don't need to translate. For example, the first one, the second one, the third, you don't need to translate. So I've blocked, I've put a, a tag. So the translators won't be able to translate because it isn't needed. And the rest, you can just do it normally. Now, for the rest of the files, they are in another format, they are in HTML. And by, by copying file by file, it would be too much trouble to then organize and upload it to the website. So what they did was different. I took, for example, let's see something popular. Okay, FAQ. This is the FAQ file. You have the HTML tags, H4, and all of that. And then you have the text. So what I did was to, let me see that, was to take all the text and ignore the stuff that isn't needed and put it in one special, Oh, what is it? Sorry. Is that a manual, Huey? Like, did you uh, extract the text from the HTML by hand? Yes, yes. Okay. And I put it in, in a file like this, in a YAML file that ends in .yml. And you can see, for example, you can put it in lists like footer. This one, this is one string. Another one. In red is the number, is the name of the string. And then in green is the string. And then I did it for all the HTML, HTML text. So that way it's easier then for, to upload to, to Transifex and then, for example, for Spanish, it will look like this. It's the same structure, but the text is translated to Spanish. Once that's done, it's way easier for, for the translated pages to just, it's FAQ, to just, uh, refer to the to those variables i can just call the variables instead of the of the text itself and then i can do this just one time and then the same file i can just use for spanish and then for portuguese oh no oh this is a bad example but let me see oh portuguese Yes, you can see it's the same thing in Portuguese and in Spanish. The only thing that changes is the the variables at the top that are tagging the file as Spanish and then as Portuguese. So all of the trouble is just done once and then I just can copy and paste and it's easier to reference. <coughs> sorry. So, um, sorry, there are then two documents, one where all of the uh, HTML files are and then a separate one where all the MD files are. Is that correct? Yes. Let's see. There are more than two, for example. Mm -hmm. There's one for, HT, for vision because it's a, a, um, MD, then let me see. Okay, there's a main one for 
all the strings for HTML files. And then there's one for the vision page because it's in another format. Then the way the site is constructed, there are two other types of files. Now there are the two files that need to be separate and that's main nav and DAO content. The way the site was created on Jekyll, this is for the navigation bar. Oops. So, so to render stuff like this, the way the site was created was to put it in variables inside these files. So these files need to also be separate. I can just upload it like this. And then the translated form would be like this, for example. I just upload the, the file like this. In Transifex, people translate the necessary part. I can lock stuff that isn't to be translated. Then once that's just translated, I just copy to to a new new file that is marked as translated. And inside here, I'll put the Spanish, the Portuguese, the French, all translated. So I can easily access. Um, so you mentioned that, uh, so what happens uh, since it's manual, um, if there is a change on the website, uh, then you'll have to manually copy and kind of go through the same process. It, is it possible to kind of have it more automated uh, whenever there is a change or with this process it's impossible? Uh, it'd be difficult to make it automatic. I don't think so. For example, let's say uh, FAQ, okay. Mm -hmm. Let's say that Somehow we decide to change the to change. I don't know the the first title. Let's see. Thank you. The first question is: Will be changed and will be something else? I think the easiest easy way would be to the to try to change the English version. And then once that changed, I could could update the oops. I could just update the, the file with all the strings and that'd be an easier way. Uh, I don't see a way to do it automatically. Okay. Is there a way for you to uh, be aware of the changes that happen uh, on the website so that um, you don't miss any? Or will you, uh, are you planning to do it on a regular basis, like once a month or something like that? I can just uh, watch the website GitHub repository and keep on attention. But, but that leave, leads to another question I have of how to update the translations. For example, every month there's a new release and the website gets updated and stuff like that. Let's say that, I don't know, for French, there's a change in, in the English text, but the French translation isn't yet available. What do we do then? Um, I think that it's best to uh, keep the languages separate because unlike uh, the software, it doesn't have to be packaged. So if the, let's say, one language has been fully translated, all the text has been translated into one language and not into another, I think it's, it's good to have that information available in the, uh, in the language. Yeah, but let's say, for example, here in Portuguese, let's say uh, the, for now, it's up to date. But then there's a, 
a change in the text and the Portuguese translation is left behind. What do we do? Do we leave the Portuguese translation or do we change it to English to, to not provide the visitors with bad information? Uh, well, I personally think, and I, I, I would be happy to hear other people's opinions, is to keep the Portuguese translation because uh, given all the inf information, uh, I don't think that there are going to be super significant changes. Uh, so some pages are going to be updated on a monthly basis, like statistics. Uh, but I think it's best to have that uh, information available on, in Portuguese. But I would like to hear other people's thoughts. So. Yeah, it's an interesting issue. I think, uh, I think the only part of the website that should be updated on a regular basis is the, like Garuna was saying, the statistics and uh, I guess the, go to the downloads page. But uh, I think statistics is just numbers. Other changes that are more significant are probably in the FAQs. And I think those we could, probably just coordinate so that when a change is made, then a translator can make the appropriate changes within, you know, hopefully a few days or a week or so. So I, I don't know. I, I don't think it should be that big of a problem. The website doesn't change that much, to be honest. Okay. okay. Let's say that, I don't know, there's a, a change in the trade protocol and the mm -hmm. Portuguese translation isn't available for the new text. In that case, do we keep the outdated Portuguese text or do we change, do we make the Portuguese translation unavailable and replace it with the up-to-date English version? How, how I think, I think we would probably go on it. Oh, were you, go ahead. Uh, yeah, just one minute. Like, uh, Obviously, it would be nice if, uh, like, uh, we have uh, uh, the most up-to-date informa up information on the website, even if it's in English, but how technically it's uh, uh, difficult to, to uh, make it work. Like, if, if there is an English update and we don't have a translation, uh, how soon we can have uh, an English file available uh, even if like you know you choose uh, portuguese as uh, the language of the website is that possible at all i don't, I don't understand the question can you repeat uh, it please yeah you said like uh, so for example we have an english page some new information very important but it's in english uh, and if uh, we open a Portuguese version of the site, uh, we have an outdated page for this in Portuguese. So how can we make it uh, uh, available in English for Portuguese uh, version of the website? Like, is it difficult to achieve or what, what do we have to do? No, 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 it's quite simple. I, I can just, I can, for example, there are two ways. I can just keep. Uh, I, oh, let me try. I can either erase the Portuguese transla translation, or I can just uh, keep the file for the Portuguese translation, but copy instead the the English text. So, for example, let's say. If you can. Okay. Oh. Yeah. That sounds so like it might that, get... Oh, go ahead. So, yeah. So let's say that this this Portuguese translation is out, out. It's 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 not correct. I can just keep the the file for the Portuguese translation here and just replace it with the English text. And then it, 
and then it will just render the English text, but it will it would still say Portuguese here. Or I can just erase the Portuguese translation, and you just get English, Spanish, and the available translations. But you have to do it manually, right? Yes, yes. That sounds like, I don't know, I'm curious to see what other people think, but that sounds like a lot of work to me. I think we should just, I think we should just keep, keep things as they are. I mean, the natural course of things without doing any extra work is for the other translations to be, uh, you know, a little bit old until they're updated. Uh, and, you know, I, I, from my experience over the past several months, the website doesn't change a whole lot. And, it, you know, uh, I don't think there's too much of a concern that there will be a big change that needs to be made immediately. Um, so it might be best from my perspective to just leave translations as they are and then, you know, update them whenever they're updated. Uh, that yeah. seems like the, the most efficient thing to do to me. Yeah, I agree with Steve. I think it's the best, like it's, it will be less complicated for you also. You, and um, uh, because the information is, I mean, if it's available in English, um, I don't know, it's, I think it's best to kind of uh, maybe update it like on a regular basis and not to worry about all the other kind of specific details or changes because, yeah, it's going to be quite complicated. I mean, we, we can be pragmatic about it. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm the one usually merging changes to the website. And if there is a change that really needs to be changed quickly, that's really significant, I'll just let Huey know or Aruna know and whoever needs to make the change can make the change. But I think 90% of the time, it's, it's not that critical. And, it, you know, it can wait a few days and nothing will, nothing bad will happen. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the way to go. Cool. My, my question was just to, about the... For example, if you give a week for people to translate, mm. and for chance that the 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 Portuguese translator isn't here, do right. we? Yeah, how it go? Uh, but uh, we can go, we can keep the outdated if it's not if it's not too critical. Yeah, that's great. And um, you also mentioned that you're going to tag some of the. Uh, strings that should not be translated. How do you decide that uh, it's just uh, enough? Oh no, it, it has to do with the code of the okay. of Liquid and Jekyll. So some lines are, for example, the layout, it's a variable for the code, so it doesn't make sense to translate. Despite it appearing of, in, in TransFX, you can change it, it's no, it, it is necessary. And the reference is the same, and the title is the same. So stuff like that, it's, it doesn't make sense to translate. So I tagged as um, to not translate. And question. Yeah, right. And uh, so, um, do you think it's best to uh, update the information uh, like every two, two to three months? Maybe uh, every month is a little too often. Maybe like every three months, or uh, unless there is a significant change, of course, then uh, that uh, Steve or someone else can notify us if it's something very, very important. Uh, or it also depends on you if, uh, if it's not too much work. I think it's kind of you can decide, but um, I don't think I don't think that it's much work, and I think we can do it monthly. At least with each release of the software, we can just keep the text of the versions up to date and stuff like that. And because with the version, it's just uh, numbers. I don't think there's uh, there's much trouble. So it's going to be monthly, both both transferring to TransFX and from TransFX. Is that correct? So it's. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. 
And uh, another stuff I like to talk, it's about the, the images for, mainly for the, for the DAO page. These charts right here, I don't know how relevant is to translate, but if we go about translating them, we need to, to send the, the strings to the designer who, who renders the images so they can re-render them with translated text. Well, I have uh, brought this uh, uh, issue up in the design uh, channel and but I haven't basically got any feedback so I was wondering if it's like be would it be possible to get the file files and then change the uh, words ourselves or is it kind of too much like it's uh, kind of in the designer's domain and we shouldn't try to change um, the files so the the files are actually SVG files so I think you can just I, I believe you can edit the text without needing to edit the, the file, uh, like as an image. I don't think so. I, I think they are, uh, how to put it, they are, I think they are SVG, but they are just one layer, so I don't think I can. Images. Cause I made a change to one earlier. Uh, let's see. Images. That's a better oh. choice. Let's see. Okay. For example. Oh no! You're right. Yeah, it looks, it's a little, uh, obviously there's a lot of text in that SVG file, but if you find the right line, I think you can just change the text how you like it to be. Okay, okay, yeah, you're right. So I can do this, I can, I can translate it. And how would it be for other languages? Uh, so right now, uh, let's see. Okay, right now on Transifex, there's another file with the called image.yml and it has the the strings. So the translator would just need to translate it and then I would uh, get a translated file and just replace it in the on ink on on the on the images. That's great. Thank you so much. It's it seems like it's a lot of work, and um, yeah, it's I'm I'm really happy that uh, you're doing this. And uh, for uh, one of the documents, uh, one of the pages getting started, uh, it's an ASCII file, and um, we I think that there needs to be some uh, some uh, changes or um, kind of updates, but that that will be like a separate document, right? On, on TransFX, if we transfer it. Yeah, that's, Steve, can you talk about that? Yeah, that's a totally different format from the markdown and the HTML and on the website right now. So that would need uh, another process to, I guess, so am I uh, correct in understanding Yacht? YAML, YML is the target format for TransFX. Is that what you guys need to import? Not necessarily. Uh, YAML is a variable format. So you have a variable in the, in the value. Mm -hmm. So, but then you have HTML that is just text with tags. I don't know ASCII. Um, well, ASCII doc is actually a lot like Markdown. It's very okay. similar, just has some additional features. So um, I, I don't know, maybe it'll work if you just 
plug it directly into trans effects. I don't know if it's worth trying. Uh, yes, but I, I read that maybe we should do videos instead. That's what I initially thought. Because I yeah. Think, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because I'm not sure how we would integrate different versions on the dosk on the docs page because it's different than the website. Yeah, it would yeah. be very manual. I mean, you pretty much would have to have separate files and then separate links to each separate file. It, it would be, uh, yeah, it would be very manual. Well, um, so I spoke to Christoph about it uh, and I kind of mentioned that the idea that uh, we, we had like about creating videos and he said that just like with this documentation, we'll, we will have to update videos every time there's a change. So it's, I'm not sure, he, he's not sure if it's going to be easier in terms of that. And also if we're planning to translate other uh, this network documentation, so it may be a good idea to kind of set it up, set the process up so that uh, we can do it for future documentation. I'll look yeah, into it. I I think it's just a yeah. matter of like a human thing just to, to find a way to uh, systematically be able to uh, prepare these ASCII doc files for being uh, imported into trans effects. I'll look into a way to do that. Yeah, yeah. I'd have to ask to have a look at the structure of, of the docs. I don't know. It's Google Docs. What is it? It's um, so the, the format is ASCII doc. It has its own hierarchy. But, but the, the platform. Yeah, it's ASCII doc. They're ASCII doc and then they're compiled into, there's a build process that compiles them into uh, plain HTML. But the platform that it's serving the, the web page that we are looking at. They're just static HTML files. I think they're hosted okay. on Netlify, but it's uh -huh. just static HTML. Which is part of the reason it's so, uh, <laughs> I guess, clunky. Or I mean, a lot of people have made requests for search functions and uh, other features, and because it's just plain HTML, it's kind of a pain in the butt to do all that dynamic stuff. So that's part of the reason. Also, I wanted to do just video because I'm uh, hoping to migrate Docs to a more potent, powerful platform like BTC Pay Server. Other uh, Docs look beautiful. Um, yeah. Yeah, so there's a lot, you know, there's, there's a nice table of contents on the side. There's a search function. There's a lot of... I think they, are, they, I think they also have troubles with translation. I think they, I'm not sure, but I think they also have troubles with the translation of the documentation. Oh, really? Yeah. I'll have I to looking, see. Get, get book is what they use, and I think Gitbook has a fee, a monthly fee, so I'm not a, not a big fan of that. I just have to look in to see what other platforms are available for, for docs. Yeah. Yeah. So um, okay. uh, just one more thing about the website. I, the, the community page, I'm thinking about translating it also. It's very simple. So we can just add to this bunch for this phase. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 So uh, are there any other questions for this, for this project? Mm. Uh. No, I don't think so, I don't. Uh, I really love the way you created the, like the button for different languages, and it looks really good for uh, Spanish and Portuguese. It's very, very promising. So. Yeah, it looks great. It's a great design. Thanks. I just copied the 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 drop-down menu from the home page and did some changes because I'm not good with CSS. So I just copy and paste and then try to alt it. I would not have known that if you didn't tell me. <laughs> Good. Yes, it's, a, it's basically the same code. Nice. 
Great. So I was. Oh, thinking... uh, uh, no, no, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. One last thing about the naming of the files, because depending of the on the name of the files, we'll get different. Uh, we'll get different paths. For example, here you can see. And I know I don't know what standard you want to use, if the URL is important or not. I don't know. Yeah, so I think I think I looked at this a few days ago, and it seemed like it was mostly the same. Like it seemed like that the URL uh, paths were mostly the same, just with the uh, language code before the path. Yeah, yeah, I changed that. I, I don't know what what's what's the 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 best way to go about it to put the the language code at the end or to let the translators translate the the page's name. Uh, I think we have decided uh, in the fa uh, in the last call not to translate the URL for now. So I don't know if it's possible just to add the uh, language at the end. I think language needs to be in the beginning, like Vista, Vista networks slash language slash and then the path. Yeah, for example, let's see. Finish. Oh, for example, Portuguese. Oh, no, <laughs> I've updated it. So ideally, you'd rather to have, for example, on the vision page, to have it say the website, the folder, and then vision underscore PT. I think it's like vision. that. Just the, vision. The PT is already before it. Yeah, I think. Okay, I, so, so so we keep the the name of the page in English. Yes. Or do we let? Okay, okay. Okay. So then we'll the just... only other thing I would say is the uh, uh, for the index page. I think I made this comment on Slack. If you could just uh, make the name of the index page index, so that when you're on the home page for a particular language, it just says bisc.network. and so because I think right now it says bisc.network slash index underscore pt, which looks a little yeah. bit messy. That's but that's a tiny thing. Yeah, I have to figure that out. But I will look. Because you just have to change the name of the file, the index file, and the the language subfolder. It's a quick two second thing. Yeah, yeah, I, I did it. But for for example, let's see, Portuguese. If I go and I change to Portuguese, it won't oh, yeah. show the index file. Yeah, that's perfect. But, but if I click on the logo, mm -hmm. it will show the index. Oh, oh, that's annoying. I have to, I have to figure it out. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Okay. I have, nice have a look at it. To uh, to keep the la does it keep the language consistent across? Page? Like, if you were to click Portuguese on the home page, would it? Stick to Portuguese if you navigate to another web page. Yes, if I go to oh, okay. Vision. Okay. Oh, okay. Because, yeah. Uh, it um, it just it changes changes for the pages where there isn't a uh, translation. For example, if I go to Community, it's yeah, just yeah. in English, so it's all. Yeah. Makes sense. So, are there any other questions? Not for now, no. Okay. So, I was just thinking of briefly summarizing uh, the main points, and then we can move on to the next point in the agenda. So, Huey, this is really uh, amazing. I'm very thankful for all this work, and uh, it seems like it's a very manual uh, process. And basically what you do, what you're going to do or you have done 
is that you uh, took different files like MD, HTML, YML, and then put them uh, uh, into separate files based on the type of the document and the, then transfer them to TransFX. That's correct? Yes, yes. Although, although it's, it looks like lots of trouble, I don't think that it's that much. I think it will be simpler than it seems. Okay, okay. and then um, you're planning to update the text. Um, uh, if there are any changes in the uh, website, you're planning to do it once a month. And uh, in the same way, you're going to uh, uh, update the translations once a month or depending on the release date, right? Yes, yes. Ideally, it would be to be at the same time as the new releases come. Okay. And um, if there is a significant change, like a very important like trading protocol update, then we can do it uh, per need. Uh, we can just mention it everywhere on Slack and um, other ch uh, channels so that the translators translate it as soon as possible. And then you can do it. Uh, and um, then some of the strings are going to be marked as now translate. And um, then for the uh, DAO page uh, for the images, uh, the translators are going to translate it into their language and then you're going to manually copy and paste it for each particular language. Um, and then we're planning to add the community page uh, and uh, we are, uh, Steve is going to take to look into the ASCII doc how we can do that and then we can uh, transfer it and um, yeah so it seems like this is uh, going to be uh, like a very important uh, project so uh, I don't think we need to have a speci specific role for that but it's definitely something that uh, you are kind of the owner of this part of the translation project because you're going to maintain uh, maintain it and things like that, and right, you're sure, sure. <laughs> That's great, excellent. Um, yes, and um, I think that's it for me for the uh, website project. So uh, I was thinking of moving to the next item on the agenda, which is uh, an update on the BISC query tracker by Evgeny, who um, he has uh, created this BIS query tracker. And um, yeah, so would you like to yeah, update yeah. us on that? Yeah, yeah well, I'll try to be short, as I need uh, to run in a few minutes. So, uh, well, uh, I think most of you have already used it. Uh, <clears throat> let me share my screen. Yeah. Okay. Can you see it? Yeah. Oh, cool. Uh, so yeah, we currently have this uh, spreadsheet, Google spreadsheet with uh, queries. I think that uh, most of our translators have used it already. Uh, the only problem that we have uh, had so far that uh, like. Uh, in the previous meeting, we discussed that it was it would be possible for us to ask the developers to look at it and uh, answer the open queries. Uh, I did post the message in the dev channel, but unfortunately, uh, no one responded. So, uh, uh, if Steve could tell us whom can we, uh, maybe we can ask someone directly. Uh, it, it's really not many of them, it's like 10 queries still unanswered, so if someone uh, would be able to like uh, do it once a month, probably I can just ping them on Slack, uh, it would be really nice. Hey, so I took a look at this and I, I, I asked on Slack, I'm not sure, maybe I didn't, but um, what exactly, so for me it was confusing what to do. I took a look at it and I, I, uh, uh, I wasn't sure how to react. Uh, so basically, yes, we have like a source term here, for example, like bond and like uh, uh, some translators just don't understand what bond means in the context of uh, BISC software. 
So yeah, if like there there are some answers, someone posted it already. So if if you could like you know add something here and says yes, it's this or no, it's not this, and explain maybe some terms. So basically, you need to uh, uh, look at the open ones and check uh, the source and check the question what the translator is asking, and then just uh, add your answer here to the answer. Uh, column and that's it mm, okay i mean uh, i can pin you in in slack and we discuss like if you have any questions uh so if if that's okay with you i can we can do it like uh, this uh, tomorrow maybe or uh, monday whatever sure yeah i mean for my from what I, I mean i looked at it a few weeks ago but it looked mostly correct to me there wasn't too much that i wanted to add anyway but i guess i can go through and acknowledge that in the spreadsheet oh. so you know. okay yeah i mean you could just say you, if the answer is correct you can just say oh yeah that's fine like and i i'll just close it and yes we can move on uh, all right cool uh, cool then we can do it uh otherwise like uh there haven't been any new queries in june we only had uh, queries in April and May, probably because the, the uh, languages listed here are 100% translated uh, in Transifex. So uh, maybe we'll have more questions uh, for the website or the documentation, but uh, so far it's, it's like this. Uh, uh, well, that's all for me, I guess. Great, uh, and then there's another sheet that's called hard to translate terms. Uh, these yeah. are the terms that we can use. Uh, if they will be a basis for the style guide. Is that correct? So yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. like I mean, uh, uh, whenever someone has a difficult term uh, that needs to be like explained in more detail or something, I'm currently working on a style guide for. Uh, the Russian language, which can be used as a template for other languages, uh, we'll probably talk about it uh, like uh, at a later meeting. Uh, but yes, these the terms could be included into the style guides with uh, more details about how to treat them, uh, whether they should be translated or not. It depends from language to language. Like for example, for French, Bitcoin is not. And is unchanged for Russian, it's transliterated, but yeah, it's still if you don't translate it, we just uh, convey it how it sounds in Russian, so and so on. Yeah, that's great. Uh, and you mentioned that you need to go soon, um, because yeah. I wanted to cover a few. How much time do you have? Um, well, just a few minutes because my okay. daughter has an appointment with daughter, uh, with doctors. Oh, okay. Uh, I think, uh, let's see. Um, yeah, maybe I'll just go jump to the fourth point and then we can discuss uh, the other. Uh, yeah, yeah of, sure. Yes, so uh, I just wanted to mention that uh, since Evgeny is here, uh, um, I am going to be uh, traveling for a few months starting uh, the beginning of July. And um, I, uh, Evgeny has been very, very helpful for many months uh, and we've worked very closely together. So uh, he will be taking over the role of the Transifex admin uh, starting basically July or uh, over this uh, next two weeks. Yeah, so. Thank uh, you so yeah, much. Like, uh, yeah, you're welcome and uh, like, I'm open uh, for communication anytime, guys, if you have any questions, just in me on Slack. Uh, They'll probably keep on doing these meetings uh, once a month while Arun is away. Uh, so yeah, but, uh, good to be here, <laughs> and I hope uh, everything will be all right while you're absent. Oh, I'm sure it will be more than all right. So, yeah, that's great. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. I have to run, guys. Yeah, right. I will watch the rest of the meeting uh, in the recording. Yeah. So, bye bye. Okay. Bye. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so um, let's talk about then the next uh, point uh, item on the agenda is, uh, and this is uh, these are a lot of things that are. Um, uh, I would love to hear your thoughts and um, yeah, 
so the first one is compensation request rates. Um, so uh, I apologize uh, to the translators if uh, we just kept going back and forth for certain like for rates in terms of keeping it a range or keeping a specific rate because it's a little hard uh, as more and more information is available, well, uh, it will become clearer. But I thought that it would be better if we uh, today or over the next uh, week or so uh, decide on the specific rates, both for the translations and reviews, and then stick to them. And then if there is a, some uh, important change or if there are some other languages that are very complicated, then we can uh, adjust rates for those specific languages. So right now, uh, on the this translation documentation, we have uh, 0.07 PSQ per word for translations and 0.035 PSQ per word for reviews. But I think, um, I, I just want to make sure that the translators are happy with the rates and uh, kind of, we implicitly take into account different um, co costs of living and other things. So uh, anyone has any ideas in terms of kind of increasing the rates or keeping them the same or any thoughts? Sorry, where are you seeing those rates? Uh, so the, uh, I have them on the BISC TransFX the documentation that I have created. Um, uh, and, uh, Okay, okay, I found yeah. it, thanks. Mm -hmm. And because we're planning to have all this documentation be available officially on the BISC GitHub side, uh, Christoph uh, suggested that we clarify this so that it's kind of more official. Uh, and of course, it is subject to change. It's not like set in stone, but it would be good for everybody, I think, to have consistency and not to change it every month. Yeah, I think I think the the bounty system it's very seems very efficient to to for us as a community to decide how much the, a certain task is is worth and to set a a, a specific rate so that people coming in can can anticipate that they'll get rewarded a certain amount for a certain amount of work. Then, rather than just letting people decide, because that way it be dif very difficult for coming to a consensus. So, um, yeah, for bounties, yeah, it, uh, that, yeah, that's a very uh, important like point. But for the current translators that are um, have been submitting compensation requests uh, and. Uh, have more or less clear ideas about the rates. Uh, are you happy with these rates? Would you like to change them? Because for bounties, we can su suggest, like for like Chinese, for instance, uh, uh, but it may be kind of slightly different. We can also look at the market rates. That's why uh, we also had a range, but. Uh, I was thinking maybe if we just say 0 0.08 for translations, 0 0.04 for reviews, or because it's I looked at other uh, at the more recent compensation requests and it was kind of around that uh, range. So um, yeah, uh, for the tr translators who are here uh, during at this in this call, um, I think since you are the ones who are kind of active translators, part of the translator community, it would be great to kind of have a consensus on this, if possible, because I don't want to set rates myself, so. Um, I can speak for myself. I submit uh, the, um, the last uh, compensation request with uh, eight, not uh, seven, and uh, it went through. Uh, and I didn't change uh, the review uh, rate. Uh, I take I took the lower one. Uh, there is not 
to see significant change between uh, set seven or eight. So if you want to set it at seven, I, I'm good with it. It's, it's okay for me. At the beginning, I, I set at eight because initially I spent a lot more time to understand terms and stuff. But now it's quite easy. I, I know what it means. And so seven is fine. It's okay for me. Yeah, and for me, I'm not uh, translated by trade, so uh, it's quite arbitrary. So I, what, what we decide, it's quite fine by me. I don't have much trouble. Can you hear me? Yeah, yes, great. Then, okay, okay. Uh, okay, then uh, maybe for now we'll just leave it as it is, and then uh, uh, you can discuss it with Evgeny and just uh, continue discussing this. Uh, and uh, yeah, is that does that sound good to everybody? Yes. Okay. Yeah. That sounds yeah. good. Can you? How do you? Uh, how do you pronounce his name one more time? Ah, uh, Evgeny. Evgeny. Yes. <laughs> Thanks. I don't think it, it looks a little bit different spelled out. Ah, uh, yes, it's Yevgen, uh, but it's. Uh, I think that there should be, yeah, because it's also yeah. Russian and yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Um, okay. So yeah, okay. Uh, so that's something again. Uh, feel free to share your thoughts and opinions on the Slack channel and yeah. Uh, then the next topic, as uh, Hugh mentioned, the bounties. Uh, we were. Uh, planning to have these different bounties. Uh, and I opened an issue to just have discussions on that. And again, uh, I think that it will be the, uh, for different tasks, like for instance, uh, now that he has been doing so much work, he already can make his own assessment of his own work and then submit a compensation request. But for some other new projects that uh, we need to have someone do, uh, or for specific translations. Uh, Evgeny mentioned for uh, legal translations because we want to translate terms and conditions and it, hasn't been, it has been put on hold because we don't have anyone with the legal expertise. So maybe we can have that specific bounty. Uh, yeah, my question about that is the way about uh, how we go to make a, a bounty. Who, who would uh, put down the the BSQ amount and stuff like that. I don't think that there's a, a multi-sig way to do it. I don't know. Or, yeah, I, don't I, think, know. I think it will be best probably for the ad, uh, admins. Uh, well, we have two admins. Uh, well, right now it's me and now it's going to be Evgeny uh, and uh, Christoph. But Christoph is quite basically busy with other projects. So I think it will probably be up to the community to suggest different bounties and for Evgeny to actually post a bounty. Okay, but so for example, let's say that we, we want to, to make a, a series and to, to have it translated to Chinese. Uh, Evgeny would make a, a, a compensation request then would, that would be sent to the DAO, and that would be that he, he would get the BSQ from there? I, that's a very good question. I haven't thought about the specific details. I thought that it, he would just create an issue with the bounty amount, and whoever takes that bounty, uh, they say, oh, they, they will do it, and then they will need to do the work, and then they will submit a compensation request uh, uh, documenting their work and also linking that bounty. Uh, oh, okay, 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 okay. So, yeah, okay. I was, thinking, I was just thinking of it as being a manual thing for now. Okay, it's just uh, an advertisement. It isn't, uh, yeah. uh, we won't, yeah. we wouldn't lock a certain amount of views. Okay, okay. Yes, because it will be a little hard to say. Maybe it will be less or more uh, depending on the work. Uh, yeah. So, that's it for bounties. And then the Next item is ambassador initiative. Uh, I have just written up a few thoughts uh, based on conversations with uh, other translators on uh, having this um, kind of more coordinated language specific uh, communities and activities. Uh, there has been a lot of activity in Spanish 
uh, just lots of translations and meetups and interviews. And unfortunately, all of that, all of that information disappears um, on Slack eventually. So it would be great to have it somewhere, to have it available somewhere and um, uh, to have it, since there are a lot of translators like Arnaud who express an interest in being an ambassador. So there's a lot of overlap uh, and um, Steve is doing a lot of uh, uh, promote, not promotion, but he's, he is uh, going to different conferences and so he's an ambassador too. So uh, there's, um, yeah, uh, I thought it would be nice to have kind of all of that information available in one, at a single glance and update it uh, so that people can go and based on specific countries or languages, get that information. And also if the person who has this, who updates that information, also uh, if someone new comes, a new contributor comes, they can get them on board and uh, update them on what's happening. Uh, so basically little by little building a community for in various countries. Uh, any thoughts on that? I think that the forum it's would be ideal for that. I don't know if we need to create uh, two categories, but I think just by, uh, for starting we can create just threads and have the threads with the information, and then we can just reference to that. So create, uh, what do you say, create? We can, right now on, on the forum, there are different categories. There are support, payment methods, trading. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you need to create a, a new category for each market or for each language, I don't know. Or if you can just create new threads, like, uh, like you created a thread for translated calls on the forum. Maybe we can just create a new thread for a market and that's, that would suffice. Okay, so uh, I think I did it in the promotions. So maybe in the promotions category, we can have uh, each like a thread for, for a specific language. I also thought it would be great to have uh, that information available, like at least like an, a summary or an overview in English and in the target language. Um, I think it would be fun. Uh, but yeah. So what, uh, how, um, I'm not clear on the medium. I mean, how would you make that available? Would it be a forum post or uh, on social media or how are you thinking of actually doing it? Well, I was actually thinking of having it more, uh, so forum is good. I was thinking maybe like uh, uh, Facebook, if, I don't know how active the, uh, this Facebook pages, uh, maybe if we can do post information there. Um, um, I, I, I have no like clear idea of where it, it would be best to keep that information, uh, but it would be good to have, let's say if someone come, joins and they say, oh, I'm interested in being an ambassador in a particular country, then we just send them a link or kind of, instead of giving them all the information, uh, which is kind of hard to keep track of. Uh, I've made, uh, I've put a, posted a question about the ambassador on the forum and I got a reply. So uh, naturally I went as, uh, on the forum to ask this kind of uh, information. So I suppose it's a good place, the forum as stated uh, earlier. Uh, it's like a natural um, things. I feel, I feel it like natural way to, 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 to get more information about the ambassador program on the forum, I think in my opinion. Yeah, I think we can just create, a, for example, a, a French thread, we call it French, and the first post would be, uh, we'd have links for the relevant information and then people would be able to comment below. Yep. I've yeah. made that for the basic attention token. I've made that way for basic attention token. That's great. Uh, I think it's again something that um, to, it would be great to have like uh, 
a particular contributor or a translator be kind of saying, oh, I am the ambassador for this and doing all this work. Uh, and then, of course, be compensated for that. But so that uh, information is, keeps being updated uh, and just helping bring in new contributors. Uh, and uh, yeah. So I will leave it to you guys to kind of decide um, if you want to do that. Um, if any of you are interested in doing something, something like that, if you're already interested in being an ambassador. I've sent a link on, uh, on Zoom uh, about the BAT community uh, program, so you can maybe uh, look at it and uh, get some idea from it. Okay, thanks. And along those lines, Aruna, uh, I think nowadays people um, talk more through, I don't know, Facebook and Telegram and yep. Twitter. So maybe those platforms would be more important to pay attention to. Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, I don't know if BISC has a Telegram, I don't know if, has, if one has been created. I think there is, but it's more maintained by uh, community members who are not core contributors. So okay, okay. we keep a little bit of a distance with it. Uh, I don't think it's super active. But in, on Telegram, it's possible to also create specific, like uh, language specific communities, right? So if we, we can actually, um, I think it would be great to have it just driven all uh, in a particular language, like in Portuguese or in French. Because I mean, we kind of, what is the purpose of this? Is to spread the information about this and bring in new people in that particular country or language sphere it's to mm -hmm. to create a community in the in the specific language because i, I i've done one um, telegram for basic attention token to and i noticed that uh, uh, when there is some uh, information or news people like to to be uh, to discuss with uh, uh, other users in their native languages so it's very easy for for example, you come back from the work and you just check uh, the Telegram uh, about uh, BISC or BASIC Astotion token and you get the last news and a date and uh, people talking about. And if you have one question, it's very easy to just post your question on Telegram and uh, wait for the reply. You don't need your computer or stuff. Very, very easy. Yes, yes. And, and I have to create a, a Reddit or Slack or forum account, create a little barrier. I think it's rather easy for people to use just the tools they use the they use for other stuff to just yep so uh then shall we then um, just maybe, uh, maybe create an official uh, an official one for um, telegram on, and uh, you can um, put the link on the twitter page to get attraction uh, on it But, but uh, Steve mentioned that there's already a Telegram. Uh, oh, okay. So, well, there is for English. Um, okay, okay. So if you wanted to do like a French one or a Spanish one, then that could be that could be worth doing a new one okay. for. Maybe the ambassador will be responsible for the Telegram page. So I was thinking that maybe we can just say that uh, there can be a, a list of things that the ambassador can do. Like one of them is uh, Telegram, another is making sure that information is available on forum, and, uh, and Facebook. Maybe if, if there, yeah, Facebook. Uh, so then, so Telegram, forum, and Facebook. Maybe that's how we should just focus on these three. Uh, and maybe also Bitcoin Talk uh, Forum is uh, a good place to, to meet users. Uh, I was thinking maybe Ambassador can also create a, a specified profile uh, on the Bitcoin Talk and uh, repost the news in their language and keep uh, in, in talk with the communities. Yeah, so then maybe it's like we can have one uh, general structure in English. Uh, and then depending on different languages, it can vary. 
And uh, so it will be like posting information on that. And maybe if there are translators, and of course they're translating. So it's kind of bringing all of these different activities together uh, and then kind of bring it to, to the people. And if yeah. they're also interested in uh, having meetups or something like that. Uh, I was thinking okay. also, um, for example, in the French community, there is some uh, influence and um, for example for the bad project uh, I, I've seen a couple of French people to, uh, making sub tutorials and presentation and uh, it could be great uh, to identify for uh, each uh, language uh, nationality which people can can have a good audience and uh, maybe ask them to create a, a video or a small demo about uh, BISC and stuff so we can reach a, a nice audience very quickly and uh, we, we, we give them a bounty for, uh, for a video, uh, stuff like that. It's an idea. Yeah, so th there seems to be seem to be a lot of great ideas. So what probably will happen is that like you are not or some other translators, they are going to have different ideas and then there will be share sharing of ideas in different communities. Yep. That's great. And I think that's it for unless there are other questions, I think that's it um, for the all the items on the agenda. And um, yeah. Um, any other questions? No. Okay, then uh, I'm going to, uh, we're going to have this uh, call, the recording available on YouTube. And um, yeah, I'm going to write up some thoughts and share them with you guys on the Slack. And uh, yes, I had a, a, just an amazing, this is definitely an amazing project. I'm very happy to just be interacting with you and I learned a lot. And uh, so that's great. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Take care.